everybody. <laughs> we have an it's the morning for you. Good morning, everybody. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Vlogsters, I have a little bit of iced coffee left. I came home from my MRI and I asked Jimmy to please give me some coffee and I'll tell you all about it in a second. So take a sip with me. Even though it's iced coffee and it's half gone, it's so good. I wish I should have shared it with you in the beginning. I got some sugar-free caramel from Smucker's in the mail. And I said, could you just make me a fancy coffee? And he put the caramel on the outside. You can see a little bit of it. And he put some iced coffee and some sugar-free caramel macchiato creamer. Oh, so good. That's going to be gone before I am um, finished with this vlog. So the first thing, let me take this earbud out and shut off that noise because I'll tell you all about what's going on. Drop my hair clip, no big deal. Okay, you will hear a little bit of clicking, but that's to be expected. So hi everybody. I wanted to get on here as soon as I got home and got settled and called all my family and friends to let you guys know what's going on. So today I was very successful with my MRI. Yay, Jerry, pat myself on the back. I had an MRI with contrast. The team in Springfield Mercy was amazing at this imaging place. Amazing. Um, the there was Brad. I asked mom to go get a bariatric wheelchair. I wanted to use my walker because it hurts longer to sit. It hurts to sit longer than it does to actually walk. But when I use my walker, I don't use it like a traditional walker. I lean totally on it and I just like shuffle my right leg. It's pretty much how that goes. So I said I wanted to use my walker and just have mom have the wheelchair behind me. So she went in to go get one and a man came out with one and I was like, oh, look, full service. Um, and he's like, yes, ma'am, only the best. So um, that was Brad. Brad was so nice. Um, so I said to him, I was like, well, Brad, what we were going to do is, well, I didn't know his name yet. I'm sorry. I said, like, what I was going to do is use my walker and just have her follow me with the wheelchair in case I needed to sit. He's like, perfect. Like he was so excited that I was going to try to walk. So I walked and I had to go to the ladies room first. We went in a little early so I could go to the ladies room. It was a long trip. Um, but just so you know, prophylactically, I did not take my normal stool softener, laxative, and fibrous things that I do on occasion um, because I didn't want to have any stomach issues. I also didn't eat breakfast. I did have a large tape, a large cereal spoon, like, like one of these of peanut butter to take with my medicine this morning. So it wasn't fasting or whatever um, because I knew that the contrast, sometimes the contrast you should have, you know, medicine i'm not medicine you should have something in your stomach whatever i was trying to drink enough water that they could do the iv but not so much that i would have to pee in the middle of the test because <laughs> i told the lady so um after the bathroom because you can't take the you couldn't take the i couldn't take the wheelchair into the bathroom so i used my walker i got to wash my hands with running water for the first time in six plus weeks you guys have no idea how exciting that is like i've been sponge bathing and washing my hands with antibacterial wipes and wipes and wash and wash in the bucket having that warm running water on your hands gosh i leaned on the sink for like i felt like 20 minutes but i know it was not i know it wasn't 20 minutes but that's what it felt like because i was luxuriating in running water i really wish my walker fit through the bathroom door that's all i have to say about that that being said that's what we did. I went to the bathroom. Then we got, after we left the bathroom, I said, Ma, I think I need the walk. I think I need the, the, the seat because I'm getting tired. My legs are getting weak. And that's what happens. What happens is, and that's what was happening with my knee injury in the beginning was my legs would get weak. It wasn't so much that they hurt, which they did, but the pain wasn't the problem. The weakness was. That's why I started using the walker in the first place. So I had her bring the chair behind me and I sat in it and just held my walker. While we went in, I registered. I sat for 25 minutes. Today, that was a record. That was the first time I went to registration. I had to sign print papers. We had to pay. And I just got to the point where I was like, I really just need to lay down on a bench for a second. And they did have those benches, but they also had these nice, like, um, sort of, like, uh, settee type of, of, like, 
chairs. And Carla was like, do you want to try to sit in this? And I was like, yeah, let me try that. And it was so comfortable. And as soon as I got in it, Brad came out. And he's like, Jerry Ann? I'm like, oh, sorry, Brad. He's like, I knew I was coming to get you. I was like, she said I'm the beef here in a little bit. So I didn't know how long a little bit was. So he brought me back, um, brought me to, uh, I used my walker to go back there um, because they can't bring the walker back there because the MRI um, imaging. So I used my walker to go to the little like, I don't know, like ER room cubicle. I don't know what you would call that space. I'm sure it has a name. Um, and I sat there and I sat in a chair again, which was good. So I walked a little and then I got to sit again. And she did my IV, Angela did my IV. And Brad asked me all the questions and they gave me a wristband, like a hospital band and everything. I took it off already. Um, and she said, um, you know, she tested all the places and she said, this place looks good. And that's usually where I get it. So I don't know how to describe it. This is how I was just describing it to Lisa. I'm like, you know, the inside of your elbow, but it's like right, like on the outside, <laughs> the outside of the inside of your elbow. So basically right here where it starts to go around towards the back, it's like a perfect, that's the vein they always can get like such good blood work and everything so um that's where my iv was but she was like i see it and i feel it but it's just not giving any blood return so brad says do you want me to tap out uh, she, uh, angela x brad she's like can you tap out michelle michelle was helping someone else um get dressed after his test and brad went over and helped out and was really nice everybody was just so nice and michelle came over in like two seconds she was like oh i see and she did like sideways like literally like sideways and boop, perfect, rapid, rapid go. So then after that, they brought over like the MRI wheelchair. It's made out of aluminum, so it's not magnetic. Um, and they brought me back. And actually she said, can you get on either side? And my brain didn't process this because when I got in, the pillow was head in first. And I said, yes, thinking head in first. But then I asked her, I was like, do you want me to go in feet first? And she's like, if you want to go in feet first, so they switched the pillow, but I didn't switch sides. Well, it was more difficult to get on the bad hip and roll towards the good hip than it was to get on the good hip and roll towards the bad hip. So um, it was a little bit trouble and I was like, okay, got it. She's like, just scooch. I said, I know I'm on my way. It just hurts real bad. So these ladies were amazing. And I'm not, t I'm not kidding. They each one put an earbud, an earplug. Then they put on the, the headphones. What music do you want? Oh, music. We got that music. No problem. And um, Angela gave me a pillow under my left knee, which of course my left knee isn't the problem knee. So she wanted me to be so comfortable. And then Angela put, I'm um, not, Michelle put the thing, Angela gave me the pillow. Michelle put the thing under my heel, like the other lady did. It was just a different type of thing. And I said, this was the problem that I had last time. Can do you have one of those foamy things can go under my knee? She's like, well, listen, I can't really put it under your knee because your knee needs to be as close to the table as possible. She's like, well, let me try something. And she put it right below my knee, under my calf. And I can't believe that made a difference. What The way I described it to my sister, I said, I guess like a bridge, the longer the bridge, the more stress, you know, the shorter the bridge between supports. That's why we add supports on a bridge, the less stress. And I feel like that was the only thing I could think of because they were so close to each other. Um, that was why it wasn't painful this time. So I was very grateful for that. I was very comfortable. Um, my arms, the only thing that like last time I was able to put my arms over my head very easy, but I think where they had put the pillow, they kind of put the pillow under my shoulders instead of just under my head. Last time it was just under my head. So it was hard to put my arms over my head, but they were up, but this machine, like she would pull me in and I would like, oh, 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 wait, move my arm, move my arm out of the way. <laughs> and it was before I knew it, it was 20 minutes. I was just spent my brain just listening to music, traveling. My brain was traveling, you know. I went everywhere from trying to remember my fourth grade teacher's face when she would look off in the distance like she was thinking about something. The kids, the rumor was she used to talk to her fingers, but I really think that she was just, probably just had like ADD and was just working stuff out. <laughs> uh, I was doing everything from there, but trying to remember the place that so sells the, the cheese steaks that Mary and Peter like in Chicago. Because <laughs> there was a commercial on the radio about getting Panera on a road trip to Chicago. And I was like, if you're going to go to Chicago, go to the 
oh, what is the place? And then I remembered it's Portillo's. But that's what I spent. My brain was just like all over. The music was the third background. I was paying attention, trying to zone out. Just trying to be as present, comfortable, and still as possible. So this machine was different. This was a Simmons machine. I don't know if that's how you say it. S-E-I-M-A-N-S. And it had a screen on it, like a digital screen. And this one was, you could see the picture of a body before I went in. And before I knew it, I see the picture of the body. And I'm like, oh, am I done? And then she came in and she gave me the contrast, which I, so quick, I didn't even know I was getting the contrast. I thought she was flushing the needle. And before I knew it, I had that sensation my sister said, when they give you the contrast, it feels like you peed yourself. You feel like a warm sensation around your groin area. So... I was like, oh, okay. And then she put me back in and I swear this wasn't 20 minutes, the second session, but you know, she said I was done. Well, I'm just sitting there and I'm doing more thinking and I'm feeling the sensation. And I'm like, I'm very thirsty because I got dry mouth and I got hot mouth and I'm trying not to. And it's done. I see the image come up on the machine again. I'm like, oh, did I break it? I was dancing with the bulb in my hand and I was like, oh my God, did I squeeze this? I didn't squeeze this, did I? And I looked up and I was waiting for the door to open and I was like, did I break it? And she's like, no, you did, you didn't, you're done. It looks great. I wanted to just wait and check the images to make sure I got them all. And she's like, no, it looks good. And I was like, okay, thanks. Well, on the way home, now we did stop and get some lunch at Burger King. The Burger King here temporarily closed because they're rebuilding a new one. So I have been, I, I Jones Burger King like, once a year, maybe twice a year. Let me take that back. When I was eating gluten, I used to love their chicken fries. Love their chicken fries. But for the most part, like just a Whopper, just a flame broiled Whopper. Um, but obviously not doing bread. So then I would switch, when I was doing, uh, when I was diabetic, I would do like a Whopper Junior and only eat the bottom bun. Or I would take, or I would cut it in half. I mean, only eat the top bun. I would cut it in half and make like double, like a half of a double bun burger. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like I would flip it on itself. That's one of my tricks too. So I, I was thinking like, I just wanted a double Whopper with bacon, double Whopper with cheese with bacon, no ketchup and no bun. And I ordered something that I thought was what it was, but this didn't have lettuce, tomato and onion on it. So it was very different, but it was good. I only ate half of it because I was hungry at this point. But I, because I hadn't eaten anything all day, but except the peanut butter, um, but I really couldn't eat all of it. I only ate like a little less than half. So um, we started to drive home, drank a lot of water. Mom bought me a bottle. I brought my bottle with me, which I don't know what he did with, to be honest with you. It was in the bag and now it's gone. Um, I had a cup of water from the hospital, which is here. This is the ice left over that melted in the car. Um, and I drank a bottle of Aquafina and my Harry Potter cup. So I've been trying to drink like lots of water. They tell you to drink lots of water to flush the stuff out, the, the contrast out. Anyway, anyway, after Burger King, uh, we we're on our way home and we got the results already. And I was like, okay, that was fast. Like a message came out, new test results. And I was like, oh, Okay. So I have a friend I've mentioned before who's a doctor and I screen grabbed all the test results and I just text them to her because I have to tell you what it reminds me of, the way it's printed is like an old, old, old typewriter with a really bad ribbon and you can't zoom in in the app. You have to like take a picture of it so you can zoom in. But we between all of the light in the van and like not having my sunglass readers, I only had my readers or my sunglasses, these particular pair I couldn't double up because I had brought my big these big Mr. Fredrickson glasses and my sunglasses don't fit over it. This is what I brought because they're the sturdiest and I was afraid if I rolled over them, which I did, um, I wouldn't break them. So, so I couldn't read it. So I just sent it to her. I was like, um, she read it. I'm, I'm guessing so quickly. She reads like, I'm sure she's a doctor. So yeah. So she read it and, um, thank you by the way. And she said, Oh yeah, there's a fracture. She's like, there's definitely a flat fracture. She said, it's a, it says here there's a pathological fracture. Fracture. So I said, thinking to myself, I've watched Quincy my whole life. If you don't know who Quincy is, go watch it. It's great. And I was like, what does pathological mean in this instance? And she said, 
like from a tumor. Now I knew I had a lesion, so we knew this already. This isn't news. And they said in the M and the x-ray it could be malignant or benign. But the MRI was to decide whether or not the x-ray was, like basically to validate the x-ray, basically to prove whether or not the x-ray was correct. So yes, there is a fracture and it's coming from the, the lesion. Um, and yeah, so I thought the biggest irony of it all, and so then I was, she recommended call your orthopedist right away, have it taken care of right away. Well, my orthopedist leaves at 1130 on Fridays, but I did leave a message with the service because he, he wanted the MRI stat and obviously weeks, months later, like, like a month later, I finally got it done because August 9th, I know that August 9th was when I talked to him, but I knew that the first MRI I could schedule was August 23rd. So August 9th to September 10th is one month. So I'm like, for one month, I've been trying to get this stat freaking thing done. Nobody's fault but my own. Honestly, I'm not blaming anybody. It's my own fault. So um, so I knew that he wanted it done. So I basically left a message for his office to say, I want to let you know that I did it. It's successful. I got the results back already. I wanted to know what's the very next thing we need to do. So I'm hoping that he checks in at the service over the weekend and maybe he can give me at least, you know, let's get you in as soon as possible for a biopsy or let's have you go X, Y, and Z or something. So I'm, but Jim said, uh, absolutely no more doing anything here. I actually said to my sister, I was like, yeah, I'm supposed to keep my, I'm supposed to not bear weight on it. Like when you know it might be a fracture, you're like, yeah, but it might be a fracture. Maybe it might not be a fracture. So you're like, yeah, you know. But now that you know it's a fracture, now you really have to be careful. Oh my goodness. Anyway, when I looked up the description from the x-ray, it gave me, it brought up most of the articles were about children. They were like, oh, this something something in children this this bone mass in children and I'm like I'm like the oldest person with this bone mass is that what we're saying but um we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about it I said obviously there's a 50 50 chance that it's gonna be malignant or benign and uh we'll cross that bridge when it comes we know you know we're gonna treat what do you say prepare for the worst and hope for the best that's what I've always said and um of course Jim's worried Jim does as Jim does um, we hope to live stream tonight, actually in a little while when I'm done filming this video on the main channel. So if you join us on the main channel also, then you'll see that or you have the opportunity to see that. I don't know exactly if I'm going to feel up to it or how it's going to go. Cause right now I'm in a lot of pain, but I'm like super okay a little bit, you know, I did take, um, like I said, prophylactically, I didn't take any of my, um, helped me go to the bathroom medicine and I didn't have any coffee and I barely ate anything. Um, so I was like exhausted. That's why I'm having this coffee now. <laughs> That's why I had this coffee now. It's what I meant to say. Excuse my language. Excuse my burps. But, um, yeah, I was super tired. So I don't know how I'm going to feel in a little bit. I'm going to try to um, roll over and it's almost time for like nighttime medicine. I did take my 12 o'clock medicine at 11, which is good. It's like, okay to do that. Um, and I did take the Tylenol with codeine as the extra pain medication since they never, my insurance company never approved or still hasn't approved the, uh, the Narco, which is like Vicodin. Uh, it's called Narco now. And um, I was prescribed 5325 to take for this procedure, but they didn't approve it. But the Tylenol codeine seems to work for me at night. So I took that um, prophylactically so I would be able to get through the test and it worked great. After the test, I took an additional leave. Um, they say you can take up to three a day and I was in quite a bit of discomfort afterwards. So I said that's, let me, I went in, um, basically the lady gave me water and I um, went out to the hallway, got my purse and was actually waiting for Carla to bring the car around and took it there. And I was like, gotta take this pill now because I need it. 
but the ride home was great. Obviously, I was uncomfortable, but I was in a very comfortable position, so it started to ease off, stave off a little bit. Um, I said I was so comfortable, I think I could live in the van. No. <laughs> Jimmy wants to get an RV, but I think we can live in this van. <laughs> but anyway, um, Jim was so sweet. What he did was we had the queen size bed that we're getting rid of had a feather bed topper, like a down feather bed topper. And he put that um, down in the back of the van underneath the comforter that I just had used just the comforter last time. And he had put it underneath the comforter so I would have extra cushion and support. Right? So sweet. So sweet. And he said, I have a surprise for you when you come home. And he went and he got me some grilled Chick-fil-A nuggets from the little uh, place there, the, the Chick-fil-A that's in the college. And I was, I was so happy. I was like, oh, thank you. Cause I, when I got home, I was kind of hungry and we talked about it first. And you know, like after about an hour of being home, I was like, yeah, you know what? I could probably eat those right now. I was gonna finish my burger, but I'll have my Chick-fil-A nuggets. <laughs> so almost done, sweetheart, okay? okay? But no, like like literally I'm saying goodbye. So, mm -hmm. um, so anyway, um, that was delicious. My coffee was delicious. He has been an amazing, support um and i love him and here he comes oh there he goes oh here he comes okay there he is um but listen i love you guys and i wanted to thank everybody for your well wishes and prayers they worked i was able to get through the mri and the trip there and the trip home without incident so i do really appreciate that and listen as always you guys take care god bless and we'll see you next time bye